Maayong adlaw! Ako si Jonna, ug maayong pag-abot diri sa Bisaya Classroom. Today, we are going to learn about Bisaya pronunciations. So, in this lesson, I am going to teach you how to pronounce Bisaya words properly. So, let's start with our Bisaya vowels. In the Filipino language, like the English language, we also have five vowels. We have the vowel A, E, I, O, U. In our national language, these vowels only has one sound. So for A, that would be A. For E, that would be E. For I, that would be E. For O, that would be O. And for U, that would be O. U. Again, that's A, E, I, O, U. Okay, that's for the Filipino language. Filipino is our um, national language. But Bisaya, which is um, the second most common language spoken in the Philippines, is a little bit easier. Okay, because we only have three vowel sounds in Bisaya. Although these letters appear in our Bisaya words, but we don't pronounce it as A, E, I, O, U. So, for letter A, the Bisaya pronunciation would still be the same. It will be A, A, as in A, okay? And then for letter E and I, we only have one sound for that. That would be E, E. So, even though you see the letter E, it will not be pronounced as E, it will be E. E. And then for O and U, there will only be one sound for both letters. It will be U. 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 That's why you might notice that when we pronounce Filipino words, our pronunciation has an accent. It's a little bit harder, you know, when we pronounce it's harder. Because that's the Bisaya pronunciation. We only have three vowel sounds, okay? So for letter A, the, the sound is A, ah, right? So, we have asin. Asin means salt. Asin, salt. Then, ambut. See? When you pronounce O, it's not O. It's U. Ambut. Ambut. Meaning, I don't know. Ambut. Do you know Tagalog? Ambut. I don't know. Ambut. Apil. Apil. Appeal, meaning join. Appeal. Next, for E, we have isda. Isda, meaning fish. Isda. Ipon. Ipon, meaning um, something that you have saved. Ipon, or to save. Inyo. Inyo, meaning yours. Inyo, yours. Take note of O here. It's not inyo. It's in you. In you. And then we have U. Ulan. Ulan, meaning rain. Ulan, rain. Unsa, meaning what? Unsa. Unsa? What? Undang, meaning stop. Undang, stop. So when you read Bisaya words, Take note that when you see a vowel, it will always either be A, I, or U. Bisaya consonants. So, let's go now to Bisaya consonants. So, um, like uh, the English language, um, we have this consonants as well. We have B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P. Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, and Z. But if you notice, the there are some letters in green circles. So, these letters in green circles appear in Bisaya words that are borrowed from the English language. So, please take note that the Filipino language, uh, even the Bisaya language, is actually very um, influenced by the English language, especially now in conversational Bisaya. So, there's a lot of borrowed um, Bisaya words from English. So, 
you can still see these letters in our language conversationally, but in our pure Bisaya language, we don't use these letters. We don't have this, this type of consonants. Okay? We only have B, D, G, K, L, L, M, N, P, R, S, T, W, and Y. So these are our only consonants. So in pure Bisaya words, we only have this much consonants. So the rest of the consonants will only appear when again the word is borrowed. Okay? And then if you notice, we have here the word nga. So like the English language, when you um, join N and G together, the pronunciation would be nga. nga. Just like the gerund, for example, playing. Mm -hmm. NG there. So in the Bisaya words, usually you will see the N and G at the beginning of the word. Okay, in the English, it will always be at the end, usually. But in Bisaya, usually it appears in the beginning, just like this word. Nga. Nga. It's not naga. It's nga. Nga. And then we also have this word, manga. M-G-A. If you look at it, m, g, and a, but this word is pronounced differently. It's pronounced as manga. It's like there's an... A and then N in between. So it's manga. Manga. It feels like there's an invisible N and G in between this word. Manga. Manga is actually added before a noun. So this, when this word is added before a noun, the noun becomes plural. Like for example, isda. A while ago we learned isda, right? Isda means fish. So if you put manga, it will become plural. Manga isda. So again, please take note when you see manga, it's pronounced as manga, not maga. Manga. When you see this word, it's nga. Nga. You will know this word later on our other lessons. Nga. Nga. So I hope it's clear. Bisaya consonants. Okay, now let's go to Bisaya stress. Okay, so this stress helps you how to pronounce Bisaya words according to their syllables. Okay, now that you know the pronunciation per letter, let's go to Bisaya stress how to pronounce the words properly based on their syllables. So let's have the word asin. Asin means salt, right? So when you pronounce it, the stress is at the second syllable. So it would be asin. 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 Okay? Not if the stress is here, it will become asin. So it's not correct. So the stress would be here. Asin. Asin. Next, we have this word. A-M-B-O-T. So the stress is in the middle. Okay? Ambut. 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 Meaning, I don't know. Ambut. Okay? It, it would If the stress would be here, then it will be different. It will become ambut. So um, some Pisaya uh, people would pronounce it like that. But the proper pronunciation, the common pronunciation of ambut is here. The stress is in the middle. Ambut. Ambut. Next, isda. Isda means fish. So the stress is in the middle. Isda. Isda. Not isda. It would be isda. Isda. Meaning fish. Next, number three, we have U-L-A-N. That's ulan, meaning rain. Ulan. The stress is at the last part. Ulan. You have to read it fast. Ulan. And then we have U-N-S-A. We have the stress is in the middle. Unsa. Unsa. If the stress would be here, it will be wrong. It's unsa. No, it's wrong. Unsa. Unsa. Okay, next. Number six. We have babae. Okay, in Bisaya, we have these two... Um, Two spellings. Actually, this spelling is more common in the Filipino language, in the Tagalog language. So, in the Bisaya language, especially in Dabao, we usually have this spelling sometimes. But the pure Bisaya word for babayi is like this. It's pronounced as like this. I mean, it's spelled like this. Babayi. 
babae. Babae, meaning woman or a girl or a lady. Gender, it's a gender. Babae, it's a female. Okay? Babae or babae. The stress is in the second syllable. One, two. Ba, ba, e. Babae. Not babae. No, it's wrong. It's babae. Babae. Okay? So when you um, read Bisaya books, um, please take note of the stresses. Actually, there are no rules in terms of the stress. You just need to be familiarized with the words and you have to practice it. And by and by, you will be able to know how to pronounce every word correctly. Here are some examples of Bisaya words that have the same spelling, but the way you pronounce it is different and the meaning would also be different because of the stress. So let's take, for example, this number one and two. That's H-A-B-O-L. So the first one, the stress is in the middle. So that would be pronounced as habul. Habul. So if you pronounce it like that, it, it means blanket. Habul. Habul. Mugamit ko habul. Meaning I will use the blanket. Habul. And then, if you have the second one, you pronounce it as habul. Habul. So, the stress is here. Habul. It means not sharp. Ang kuchilyo kay habul. The knife is not sharp. Or, habul ang kuchilyo. Same. The knife is not sharp. Habul. 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 Okay, next we have 3 and 4, P-I-T-O. So you pronounce it as the first one, Pito. Pito. Pito meaning whistle. Pito. And then the second, uh, the fourth one, Pito. Pito meaning seven, number seven. Pito. So Pito, whistle, Pito, seven. And then the last pair, we have 5 and 6, B-A-G-A. -A. So the first one is baga. Baga, meaning an ember. Okay, baga, ember. And then we have number 6, baga. Baga, meaning thick. Baga, meaning thick. Baga, ember. Baga, thick. Baga, baga. I hope that you have learned a lot from our lesson today and uh, take note that when you find the pronunciation difficult, it just takes a lot of practice. Just keep, keep on going and don't give up. And um, if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to my channel so that you will be updated on my lessons. Please click the notification bell so that you will be notified when I release a new lesson. If you want to be my uh, determined learner, please just click the join button down below. And if you want to support our dear classroom, please click the buy me a coffee link down below and you will become a great blessing to this little classroom of mine. Thank you very much, dear learners, for being here always. And uh, for all of you who are um, commenting, sharing inspirational words, thank you very much. It keeps me going. Thank you very much and see you next time in the Bisaya Classroom. Bye!